Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Coins. Today I'm reviewing Aqua from the Op and Sidekick games. Aqua is a 1 to 4 player point scoring optimization game which players are going to be trying to gather as many points as possible, primarily through building out their perfect little uh, sea coral area over here. Basically, players are going to be drafting tiles. You're going to have one tile equal to, you're going to have one tile more than the number of players in an open grid over here, where players can go ahead and try to draft those tiles, putting them into their own area to try to set up themselves up for placing these tiles down, and then later these other tiles on top of it. There's a lot of things going on in here, but the basic idea is to start off with is you grab a tile from over here when it's your turn to draft you grab a tile and you're going to put that tile somewhere in this area so for example maybe I put this tile in like there because that's a good match over there so I put this tile in which is great the other players go ahead and draft this tile is gonna be left over remaining and you go ahead and continue the next round continue to draft tiles the other player might go first they'll draft that they'll draft that and I'll go ahead and gather this and I'll place this down over here and as soon as I've created that little area over there I grab the blue tile and I place it down on top of that that's going to be scoring me three points in the game now additionally, these areas over here, whenever you create an area of, of color that's not going to be a direct pattern like that, you're going to be able to go ahead, so for example if we have this over here, everything in this patch of yellow, wherever it's touching other tiles, will also score points. So as you build out other shapes over here, as we build out, you know, let's say we build out, let's try to build this out over here, so let's construct something, let's put this over here, and we go ahead and grab another green over here somewhere, here we go, we grab another green over here, this patch of yellow is going to score both for this tile and for this tile because it touches those two areas. So you're going to be scoring additional points for creating those little areas next to the tiles you're already placing. But that's not everything because as you place tiles, additional opportunities are going to pop up. We're going to place a little purple one over there and that's great. And then we're going to create a little red patch over here. This glass is going to be going next over there. We've got a little pink over there. It's perfect. It's amazing. It's incredible. We're going to place this over here like so. We place another red tile over here. Now as soon as you place a tile in such a way that you can possibly cover it with a larger tile like so, and it has to be over three different colors, and whatever, well, whatever number of colors there are, you have to place it over different colors, so the size 2, 3, and 4, and always be placed over other colors, but you're going to take that, you'll place this down over here, and you'll score points for this tile as well, so you're going to score points for these, you're going to score points for this tile, you're going to score points for that green one again, because it's touching that over there, and so you're going to be getting more and more points as you build out your little coral. Then finally, at the end of the game, when you're done going back and forth, when you're done completely drafting out your pool, creating all your tiles, when you get to the very end of it, the last thing you're going to score for is the variable goals. And the variable goals score a little bit differently for each of these depending on which of the very, very, very many of these that you have in play, because there's a ton of these, you're going to be using six every single game for each of the six colors, and that will define how an area scores. So for example, you're going to score these pink tiles, are going to score three points for every purple one touching it, which unfortunately didn't happen over here because, well, it doesn't happen over here, but hypothetically, had we had a pink tile over here, then you'd be scoring three points for the purple tile touching the pink pink tile, meaning these always relate to the tile it's next to. Over here, you're going to score three points for each one of these. That's going to be, you're going to score three points for each one of these multiplied by the number of purple tiles you have. So had we gone ahead and created any of these, multiplied by the number of purples, you're going to score more points for that. Similarly for the yellow, similarly for these over here, this one scores four points for each red, but only if you don't cover it. So this tile over here is worth an additional four points to me, but if I do choose to cover it, it will not be worth that one as well. And then over here we have points for whoever has the most yellows, seven points for the most yellows, and three points for the second most. And like I said already, this is a small smattering of the possible tile combinations. You have all of these in play. But that's the basic principle of Aqua. In the game, you're going to be drafting tiles over here. You're going to place the tiles equal to one plus the number of players. Every round, you go ahead and draft one tile, adding it to your grid. As you do so, you'll be creating little patches over here that will be able to place those little tiles on top of. You'll also be creating those little sections over here that will create little areas of the shared color that go ahead and create your little scoring goals as well. So you get multipliers for each of those as you place them out. So for example, if I went ahead and placed this like so, and then I don't even know how to do this over here. Let's place another one. Can I grab another? I probably need a multiple red over here. But we place this like so over here. Then we have another section of at least four over there touching these two, which means these would score again. So for example, this green right now would score three times. Once for the tile itself, once for being next to this red patch, once for being next to this yellow patch over here. So you're creating lots of scoring opportunities as you go through it. And then finally at the end of the game, you score for the six unique scoring objectives in play 
as you go through the experience. And that is basically Aqua, which actually has a different title. It's Aqua Biodiversity in the Oceans is the full title of this game. But with that, let's go ahead and go to the review, starting off with ease of play. Rule looks pretty straightforward, pretty quick overall. Game time comes in at around 30 to 40 minutes, I find. Uh, maybe if you're going a little slower, it might be in that 45 minute plus range. But I find you can usually knock this out in about 30 minutes plus, I'd say. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with the fact that this is an absolutely beautiful game, and it is fun to build out this little ocean terrain area. Both from the fact that the, stat, the tiles stack higher as you go, it gives you that little sense of 3D depth, but also just the art by Vincent to trade, the general production value across the board, the tiles are nice, thick, and chunky over here. Overall, it's just a good looking game. It's just a good looking game. It's a good looking, well produced game. The variety of scoring goals keep things interesting. We have all these scoring goals over here, having a bunch of these in play and having six different ones from this giant stack every single game. And they do have a recommended starter set for simplicity, but overall having a bunch of tiles in play every single game keeps the game variable as you go through a somewhat samey principle as far as what you're trying to do, but slightly different adjustments as to how you're trying to be mindful of the different scoring goals that are in play. The fact that you have different scoring multipliers in play, the fact that you have these individual tiles, you have these overlay tiles, you have to pick and choose. Do you immediately place this down right when you get it? Or maybe because this red actually scores points not on top of it, Maybe that's more worth it to me. There's all these little different challenges to think through as how you place things, how you build out your coral, how you go ahead and gather these scoring goals. There's a lot of different things to be mindful as you go through it. And that little push, push your luck element of trying to figure out, do you grab the tile you currently can fit out? Or do you hope that maybe you can get a larger scoring tile, which is worth more points? Do you push your luck towards that over there? There's just enough things to consider in this, you know, lighter, accessible, puzzly game. There's still a lot of things to consider. As far as things I don't like in the game, there's only really one thing here, but it is unfortunately a big deal to me, which is game after game, I find that in Aqua, I do not get as much done as I want. And every game is going to be different in that regard, but in this game, I always feel like I should be getting, I don't know, some number of things done, and inevitably, I'm usually lucky to get a single one of these placed out well, maybe two smaller ones, and my tiles are usually much more disparate, they're usually harder to get a nice sequence of tiles together. I find more and more getting those right tiles to be able to place into your grid in a way that actually scores in a way that feels more rewarding. I feel every single game of Aqua I play kind of comes down to feeling like, if I just had three or four more tiles, I could have actually felt like I got enough done this game, yet game after game, I just feel it's a little too restrictive on how many things it lets you try to do, how much you actually can reasonably get done versus how much you want to get done. So ultimately, the premise of it is very rewarding. The premise of it is very compelling. I was very excited for this one, but ultimately, every single game I play, I'm left wanting a bit more as far as just how much I'll actually get done as I go through it. As far as I can see, others not liking, a few small things. First of all, it can take some time before you figure out how to place pieces. It's not always intuitive as far as the, the gathering of a piece and where it's going to go, so it most efficiently tries to build out a grid, trying to think through how the various sides are going to line up. Overall, it's just a, it's just a little bit of a... A slightly different game experience because of the nature of the way the pieces line up. I'll also say that these scoring goals are not always the most intuitive. The multiplying factor of, well, you know, hey, we have this yellow over here, but it's really multiplied by the blue tiles you have over here. That kind of a weird multiplier based on the colors of the tiles you get, I find is not always intuitive. And almost always when I teach new players this game, it usually takes a, a turn or two before that clicks in. Not a turn or two of the game, but it usually has those tiles coming out and me pointing out, okay, now good, now that's going to score based off of these. And there's usually that light bulb moment halfway through the game, even though I taught it to them the first way through. I find that just, it's not immediately intuitive as I teach people the game. As far as final thoughts on Aqua, I'm torn on this one because I walked into this really excited for this. The overall, the box size, the presentation, the type of game it is, the scoring goals, the simple accessible, you know, tile drafting, it felt like it was trying to be a Cascadia 2.0 type of game, and I like Cascadia. I've liked Cascadia 2.0 type of games. I like Acropolis, I like Cascadia, I like so many games in the genre. I was very excited for Aqua, hoping that it would be another one like that for me. And the more I played it, the more I found that every single game I kind of walked into the next game thinking like, ah, oh, just one more game and I'll, I'll feel like I'm getting a more satisfying experience. And yet that one more game never really happened. As I've continued to go through this, I still have fun with it. I still like it, but every single time I play, I'm left feeling like the next game will be the better one, that I'm able to like click a bit more and get that little bit more optimization from it. I think ultimately the way the game is designed right now, it feels like they, they give you a taste of how much you can get done without getting as much done, or at least, at least based on how I'm playing it. Maybe you're getting more of the experience, that's entirely possible. For me, I feel like I'm always just a, a tile or two away from actually achieving greatness in this one, and as it is, it kind of feels like I'm on the edge of building something great, but not, not quite there. And that, that, that takes away a game that on paper, a game that by the rules, a game that by the gameplay, I should like more. At the end of the day, that has me walking away from each game of this 
feeling like I want to like it more than I actually do. For me, this is a 3.5 out of 5. There's some good promise here, some great gameplay here. The gameplay is, is, is solid. I just want to get a bit more done in experience. As far as other game recommendations, I already mentioned Cascadia. I think this game very much feels like it's built off that kind of gameplay experience, and I think it does an overall good job replicating it. I do recommend checking out Cascadia if you haven't already. And then I also mentioned Acropolis as well. That game is another game that kind of felt like it was building off Cascadia 2.0 with multiple levels and tiers and going up, and I think Acropolis delivered for me in a way that Aqua didn't quite as much. Still a good game. I still do like it. Just... I feel like I'm one step away from this on this one. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.